So that's how we sign in. You need a passport to sign in. So as soon as I sign in, I get popped directly into my author view. So this is what I see as an author. Okay. Um, in the middle is my blogging component, which I added, plus my profile. Um, I like to be Yanni on occasion. <laughs> and over here are a couple lists that I have. You can see that I have a photo album, right. and I have a music list, which I could talk to in a second. But one of the things that I want to show is how easily this stuff is customizable. Okay. Right here I've got some revolving pictures of my son, Max, but if I wanted that to actually be center stage, um, you I just can, dra drag that? I just dragged and dropped this directly into Do the middle. Do that again. That's, that's very cool. Wow. It's, it's not sort of cool, Robert. It's actually cool. <laughs> it's sort of cool. <laughs> and it's the HTML, yeah. <laughs> and most of the modules will take advantage of whether you're in the skinny column or a wide column to kind of give you the right experience for that column. Right. Um, I also can come in here and choose one of these different themes. For instance, if I really like um, pink flowers, I can be all about pink flowers. I can pick which modules that I want. A module is the geeky word that we use to describe the different parts that are that you can actually have in your space. Okay. For instance, I can choose to have a blog roll or a book list, a music list, or my photo album. And I can choose from one of a couple different layouts. The most popular is this three-column view, right. but you can have two fat columns one just big page, or a skinny column on the left or to the right. Okay. The blogging component is exactly as you described. Here is a title. We've got rich HTML editing. I could type in whatever sort of emoticons that, I, that I'm familiar with for Messenger. I can publish my entry or save as a draft. Right. I can also, if I wanted to, add a photo directly into my blog entry. Um, I always want to have a mirror, you know, into what other people are actually going to see. So if I click that Preview My Space button, I quick hop into another IE window, which shows me what everyone else would see. And you can okay. see, here's the blog entry that I just added. Right. Hasn't been any comments yet, MC. I know, it's... Okay, add music list. What we wanted to do was focus, like I was talking earlier, about blogging and sharing photos. Yeah. But there's a couple extra list modules that we wanted to add that we, th that we thought were pretty cool. And the first is adding a music playlist. So what I could easily do is click this button. And this is the one area that will ask an ActiveX controller to help us. Okay. I click yes. So this probably won't work with some browsers, right? This will work in, in IE, okay. uh, IE on Windows. It has just communicated with Windows Media Player and actually went and enumerated all of my music playlists. So if I go and pick all music... That's a big word, enumerated. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it's an enum. <laughs> Here is all the songs that were in that particular playlist. I can check or uncheck all of these. Yep. Hit copy, and it's going to create a copy of all of the all of these music items into a list called my favorite music. Well, so why would we want to do that? The two things that we want to do is I want to be able to communicate and show to the rest of uh, my friends how cool I am. The way one way of doing that is to show people what kind of music I listen to, because people are the music that they listen to. On the flip side. I might know my friend Pablo, he's always listening to the best music, so when I'm trying to think about the cool new music I can buy, I always go and check Pablo's site. Now, will it build a link to the MSN Music Store so Absolutely. you can listen to the music? So here is the All Music link that I just created. Here's all of the music that I just um, uploaded to kind of portray how cool I am. Right. I could come in here and say, you know, this is a four-star playlist. I'm really down with Pablo's music playlist. And in fact, this $10 bill one, yep. I don't have that. So okay. I'm going to click this URL, and I'll go directly to the music store, where this beta copy doesn't actually have it listed. <laughs> yeah. um, but if it was listed, I could just do one click and purchase. Oh, wow. So just as an aside here, uh, I knew as soon as I said this was for your information editing later. I knew as soon as I said it, as soon as I said it that it was wrong. I said earlier, no ActiveX controls. There's actually um, at least a couple ActiveX controls. The photo control here. Um, or the, the music list here uses an ActiveX control to uh, get, allow you to uh, pull playlists off your MSN or Microsoft Media Player. 
Yep. And uh, the photo control is an ActiveX control as well that lets you... Uh, but it's not space. mandatory. We do have a UI where you can select photos and upload it to your space. It just so happens that if you could use an ActiveX control, it's a lot easier. Yeah. So it's there if you're in a browser that actually supports it. Right. Okay. This is our photo album. Um, so I'm coming in here and actually walking through the different photo albums, uh, the different photos that are in the particular photo album. Right. Um, so I can increase the speed, I can show titles, I can navigate back and forth. And so this is the UI that's going to be available to anyone who comes to my space and wants to check out and walk through all my photos. Well, that's what I mean. And I can email photos directly into this, right? Absolutely. So if I have a camera phone, like one of the... If you have a camera ones. phone or if you have Hotmail and you've got, you got a really interesting picture forwarded to you, you can send it directly to a space. You can set up that by default that goes in a drafts folder or it goes live. Right. So if you wanted to go live, you could be at a party at 10 o'clock at night taking some pictures and immediately email them to your space and have all your friends check out how cool the party is. Wow. And a couple other things that I wanted to show is here is here's some settings that that you can that you can make. There's a, a really popular feature of deleting your space. We don't want anyone to find this. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can, it's really easy to delete if you mess up on the name. Exactly. Um, you can turn on and off syndication, so turning on and off your RSS feed. Um, you can come in here. Here's your permissions that I was talking about earlier. Right. Um, my site is public because I want everyone to come and see it. But if I wanted to make it messenger only, I can. Now, th this is a question that some new new people have about blogging. Most, many blog tools out there will ping a ping site like uh, weblogs.com or technorati.com, which is used to get traffic and make sure that, you know, the search engine spiders find you and all that stuff. Do you guys do the same thing? Do you have your own ping server? Or do you no, ping? we actually ping weblogs.com. Okay. We actually called those guys and made sure that they were okay with the load that we were about to send them, yeah. and he's okay. Um, so we're we're gonna do we're gonna do the same thing. In okay. in general, I, I think as a, a blog application provider, we have to do our service to make sure we're we're creating a good audience for people who want other people to come and see their stuff. Right. So we're gonna do that with web log, uh, weblogs, and we're working with the MSN search team to figure out really cool, innovative ways to make sure people show up in in you know in appropriate places in the ranking. Right. Whenever you do a search. Can you now if you turn it to a private space, that turns that feature off. Correct. So that weblogs.com doesn't find out about your privacy. Exactly. In, in fact, we we also you know we also turn off RSS feeds for for people who don't want their space to be private for a variety of reasons. But it helps ensure the privacy. Ah, very interesting. And your RSS is standard old RSS 2.0. Um, what what do you guys see people using RSS for? I, I have a whole spiel, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not the expert here. <laughs> well. People read blogs in a lot of different ways. Many people will read blogs by going to our site, and we expect that most of them will, but the world is changing. A lot of people prefer to get their information through RSS aggregators. You know about that, Robert. Yep. <laughs> well, I like, read a thousand in, sites in, a night. <laughs> like 50% of the publishing problem is publishing. The other 50%, like we were talking about before, is, is aggregating. It's consuming. We have what I think is a really elegant story in our V1 product about how we're integrating into Messenger so I can do that aggregation. But it just so happens that there's a standard out there to doing aggregation outside of Messenger. We don't want to force people to have to use Messenger, although if you do use Messenger, it's going to be fantastic. Oh, but, but you really want to force it. <laughs> I don't want to force anyone to do anything, but if you're using it, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty sweet. If you actually want to use some other tool, yeah. um, that's what RSS is for. RSS is so, you, if you create a space, any of your friends using whatever tools that they use that you might not even know about, they're still going to be able to access your stuff. Right. Um, da -da -da -da. Anything else I want to know? How much space do I get? Uh, out of space. <laughs> so it, it's a it's a trial. So it's actually a very s small amount right now. It's 10 megs. But the only thing that gets taken out of your quota is your images. So when you use our photo upload control, we only put the 640 by 480s up there. So you don't get all of your storage consumed by one roll of film. Right. Um, and. In the future, we're going to kind of tweak that number and try to figure out, because we are a free product, by the way, so anyone can come and actually build a space um, starting on uh, December 2nd. So because it's a free product, we want to be a little bit conservative w with our limit, but we're going to be taking people's feedback and actually we can dynamically change that whenever we want to sometime next year. But it's not going to be a good solution for audio blogging or video blogging. But if, if we, and we don't have audio blogging built into our V1 product, you can imagine 
the release that we do support audio blogging, we're going to have to have a different story for our storage limit. Yeah. And what's the advertising like? Uh, um, we actually went back and forth. Obviously, that's where you guys are getting yeah. paychecks, right? <laughs> you know, so. Th this, so this is my space. This, has, this is a, a portrait of me on the Internet. Right. So we didn't want to have huge banner ads and advertising all over the place, but we did have to have ads somewhere. So we think we kind of did a, an elegant compromise where we have these links up at the top, yeah. and that's the only advertising that you're going to see on a space. Okay. And can you add, add other advertisements to your space? Because some of the bloggers now are putting ads in, you know, along the yeah. side or into the body. We, we currently don't support like adding like third-party ad content to the, the side of the space, but there's a bunch of different things that we're looking at. We want to continue offering a really cool free product. The way to create a compelling free product like that is to have interesting advertising opportunities that aren't in your face, that are, that are a little bit more elegant than that. We've got 50 ideas that we're looking at we're going to be doing sometime next year. And you're not doing any revenue sharing with uh, writers or blogs yet, right? No, but it could be said that that's one of our cool 50 ideas. Okay. So come and give feedback on yes. uh, how you come, like come and, If you want a really cool free product, come help us. Give us really cool ideas of how we can keep it free. Okay. Um, anything else cool that you'd want to show us? I think that covers pretty much everything. Yeah. How about files? Is there a file storage so I can upload a Word document or no, a PDF? No, we actually like only that? focus on the photo stuff, but our okay. MSN Groups product that we have today actually has a file store. So until we have a file store in, in a space, um, you can use MSN Groups. We just didn't think it was really compelling priority for our V1. How many people want to, like, by the way, here's my Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Like. No, I know a few people here in Microsoft who would do that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't can accountants have blogs too? <laughs> Check out my new Excel function that I just wrote over. <laughs> they can copy and paste the source code of their UDF into their blog. Okay. And then they'll be done. Cool. Is there a developer story yet? Um, we are, we are actually working on what our developer story would be. Okay. Um, it is really important for us to do two different things in the future. One is to be extensible. So we don't want the product team to have to build every single part. We actually want to figure out how we can work with third parties to create interesting parts in, inside um, a space. The other thing is we have to be part of a larger ecosystem. And the work that we've done for, around RSS is part of our story of like it's not just us like sitting there monolithically. We have to play really well with other RSS aggregators. Yeah. So there's the playing in that ecosystem and then within ourselves being extensible that it is going to be a top priority for us next year. Yeah. What I'm th was thinking of, it, uh, some of the tools use XML RPC so that I can uh, shove data or, or different things into the blog. And it sounds like you guys don't have a public API yet for no, but we're, developers to build for, stuff. For, like. there, there are technical and business issues about like should we support something like that. Um, if it if it helps us kind of be part of a larger ecosystem, yep. uh, that's something that we'd want to we'd, we'd want to do. As, as uh, Click Once comes out next year, I think that's going to be something very interesting because then I can build new blocks that you click on and load something new. Um, if, if there if there if people have ideas out there of like what sort of and APIs that we could be adding to kind of make ourselves fit into like the new tools that are coming out, we want to hear about. Them. Okay. Uh, is there going to be a centralized uh, MSN Spaces blog where you guys uh, point out at cool blogs that you're seeing? We're, we're working on that. We don't have the URL yet. It'll probably be something like member slash spaces, but uh, we're still working on it. Cool. Excellent. And what's the URL again that, that people are going to go to? Spaces.msn.com. Okay. On uh, 12, the morning of 12 2, we'll go on live 9 p.m. on the 1st. Excellent. Thanks. We'll try to have the video up then, too. So. All right. Thanks, Robert. Cool. Thank you. Good for, to talk uh, to you. Thanks for spending some time with me. Howdy.